introduction. All right. Okay. First up, thank you everyone uh, for joining us today. Uh, I know you've either had a very early lunch or you're planning to have one later <laughs> uh, in order to join us at this time. Yeah. So it's lunchtime. Um, so as the moderator today, uh, I'll try to keep us within schedule so we don't starve. Okay. All right. So on to our third fireside uh, chat of the blast off event. Um, why your company still takes days to process payroll. Okay, so today we are very happy to have representatives from different companies to share with us uh, more about this topic. Okay, so firstly, we have Nicholas from Telenox. Uh, we also have our payroll expert partners, Elaine from Ajuri and Arthur from WeConnect. Okay, together with myself, uh, Jocelyn from Telenox as the moderator. Okay. So before we start, I think it'd be great for each of you to give a very brief introduction of uh, yourselves uh, and your businesses. So maybe Nicholas, you can start. You're the head of customer success at Telenox, right? Can you tell us a little bit more about your role? All right, sure. Thanks, Jess. Hi, I'm Nicholas. I basically take care of uh, customer success in Telenox. So uh, to put it simply, basically our role is to uh, proactively help our customers. Lah. So whether it's uh, direct customers or even partners. All right? So basically to run their business you know, easier with Telenox, uh, where it concerns uh, monthly payroll processing, uh, statutory calculations, submission of bank files, and also including tax forms as well. All right? So basically our role, if you can, if you log into Telenox, basically if you see a blue button at the bottom right corner, you'll be able to find us there. Yeah, so um, basically, uh, you know, our role is just to, uh, you know, mainly to ensure payroll and HR are basically the last thing that they worry so that they can just focus on their, or, you know, basically to achieve their business goals. Okay, thank you, Nick. Uh, what about Elaine? Now we have Elaine from Ajari. Could you also do the same and tell us a little bit about your role and how it relates to payroll? Okay, uh, thank you, Jocelyn. So hi, everyone. I'm Elaine. I'm a chartered accountant. And I run an accounting firm that provides accounting, corporate secretarial tax, and of course, payroll processing services as well. So I've been doing that for the past um, 11 years. Um, and we have a team that has been using Talinox to process our payroll for our clients for the past uh, six years now. Yes, yes, that's right. Elia has been with us for a very long time. <laughs> Thank you for being patient with us. <laughs> okay, and maybe uh, most you know, last but most definitely not least, uh, we have Arthur. So Arthur, can you share with us what you do at WeConnect? Sure. Hi, everyone. My name is Arthur. I'm the Chief Partnerships Officer in WeConnect Group. Uh, WeConnect is a global BPO, business process outsourcing, like including accounting, payroll, tax service, uh, to help our multinational uh, clients to expand into global markets and jurisdictions. Uh, my role is to understand the global compliance, taking care of my local specialist team, definitely working with Telenox as well. Um, so to enable my team to deliver global uh, services to our clients. Uh, nice to meet you all. And thank you Telenox for inviting me to this event. Oh, it's our pleasure. Um, so just for everyone, uh, everyone's information, if, if you weren't with us you know, for the past few minutes, Arthur is actually located in Hong Kong now. In Hong Kong, you know, they're having like the typhoon season. <laughs> so yeah, if you do hear a little bit of noise later on Arthur's end, please um, be uh, patient and understanding. Yeah, and, and we just seek your understanding for that. Thank okay, you, so hey, no problem. Okay, so before we move on to the fireside chat proper, I first like to remind everyone here that today's uh, chat will be about 40 minutes in total yeah and then we'll use the last five minutes uh, for q a from the audience which is yourself okay so um you can start to put your questions into the chat feature so that later on we can get to them at the end of the session all right so let's get back to you know today's fireside chat topic uh, why your company still takes days to process payroll okay so from this statement itself we know that there may be a lot of companies out there, uh, maybe including some of those in the audience here, that actually spend days or even weeks to complete this uh, HR task. But first, perhaps we can rewind a little bit and define what it means to process payroll. 
okay, for example, like, you know, highlight the steps. So maybe we can hear from Elaine. Uh, could you help us understand what this means to process payroll? Sure. So for myself, I'll just uh, break it down into six main steps. Of course, there's some little steps along the way. So Very the first nice. will be to collect and check the staff information. So whenever mm -hmm. you have new staff or staff that are resigning, any changes in the PL status, first year, second year, or third year, or you have new um, uh, PR that comes on board where the new EP holders might convert and become a, a PR in the middle of the month. Um, of course, when staff leave is a foreigner, then you, whether you need to file a IR21 and any need to withhold the final salaries for, for tax payments. So the first step is mainly collection and check staff information. The second is to obtain the information from various sources or if applicable from the different branches and outlets or whether is it time and attendance or the commission payments. Uh, whether you are eligible for certain allowance or KPI indicators if you achieve certain sales targets, uh, whether there's unpaid leave, unutilized leave balance, and so on. Then the next step, the third step, would be in terms of calculation. That's where you enter the information um, into your payroll software, whether is it entering or uh, is it seen from another uh, system. Like for Telenox, it's integrated with, with Deputy, for example, so the information um, comes from there. So then the system will calculate the uh, commission, allowance, um, the, the unpaid leave or leave balances, uh, whether there's any bonus or entering those information in, and of course, uh, your CPF calculation. Of course, before doing that, you know, you have to indicate, you have to know uh, which are the payments that you need to pay CPF for or you don't need to pay CPF uh, and uh, things like that. So then the next step, uh, number four step is uh, what I call checking, checking and checking. Because after entering all this information, typically things doesn't go you know, uh, smoothly or, or perfect. You know, there's always last minute information or last minute changes. Um, so you have to make sure that uh, with these changes, you know, the information or the calculations are still um, correct. The fifth step is to pay employees. That's where you uh, uh, pay the employees from your bank, uh, issue the pay slips, Right, then of course the final one will be to submit your uh, monthly CPF or your uh, IR21 or your IR8A um, on the annual at the end of each year. So in each of these uh, six uh, main steps, especially in the first two steps, collection and checking of self information, and obtaining information, it's uh, that, that's the most time consuming part because it's a lot about um, communication especially if the information sits on separate systems or even worse if it's um, collated uh, manually, right? So basically these are the first five steps. If I continue more, then I'll probably take all the rest <laughs> of the time. <laughs> Very nice it's okay, Very yeah. Sharing. Thanks, yeah, yeah. You've really broken it down into all the steps. I particularly like the checking, checking, checking. And I think uh, maybe Nicholas and Arthur will also agree that yeah, Elaine has done such a comprehensive like walkthrough on the steps. Um, what about you guys? Do you have anything to add to Elaine's uh, six steps, five steps, five, six steps? Um, yeah, let me, let, let me start first. So sorry. Yeah, I, I totally agree with Elaine. So very comprehensive. Um, I, I know you make use of many uh, examples by using like Singapore uh, language, like CPF, but I would say in because I'm a Hong Kong, experts mm -hmm. as specialists. So I would say in Hong Kong, the same process actually, just a different name. We, we don't call it like CPF, we have MPF in Hong okay, Kong, but yeah. yeah, so in general, the process is the same. But again, like different company may have different uh, uh, like package remunerations. Uh, for example, some may have like TNA or OT, that makes the process slightly, slightly different, but high level, I agree, I totally agree with Elaine. Mm, okay. Thank you. Okay, maybe now that we know, you know, what the steps are, actually it seems very, you know, it seems like there are many, many players involved. Like just now Elaine also said there's the banks, you know, um, and there's like the, like the standard checks and banks processing time to pay out your salaries. You also need to make sure that when you have like foreign employees, uh, you make sure that all the visas are like done properly, right? So actually, Let's say if we cut out the 
standard check or bank processing time to pay out the salaries, which would usually be about two to three working days in general. And just focus on like the payroll processing part, which is the running of the payroll conducted by like a HR manager. How would that step be conducted? Like could someone enlighten us on this? Perhaps like Nicholas, because Nicholas is from like Telenor, which is a payroll software company. So I think we've kind of like pretty much skipped like to the second or third step right. of, of, yeah, of this already. That's right. That's right. Uh, yeah, thanks Jess. Uh, you know, thanks Jess for the question. Um, so basically, I think um, my take on basically most common pain points on payroll processing, um, it's basically, I mean, it's, you know, also due to, uh, we have, you know, uh, numerous conversations when we have during customer support and also during our demo sessions, right? So I think I can just break it down to about, I think, four, four different, uh, four different types of, four different sorts of, Right, no scenario. I think one is one is that why payroll take days is that um first of all it's manual operations and compliance as well. All right. So I I think most of audience here um you know you know you guys you know could be you know startups and also SME companies right. So your payroll are mostly manual operations using like spreadsheets. All right. So such manual work are basically time consuming. All right. So HR literally needs to know like statutory you know calculations within your fingertips. All right. So and also they will need to ensure that the company is. Uh, complying to labor laws as well and to ensure all their calculations are correct all right and besides that of course you know they do they do also need to keep precise records of hours worked by their employees salaries paid and worker classifications as well all right so all these right so it basically also means that exhaustive you know manual hours and also like you know if uh, you know as the company scales you know what used to be like a few hours of payroll processing say for example like two to five employees and when you know, when your company scales to about 20, 30, 50, even 200 employees, then it becomes mm. days, right? So the second part is basically like, you know, which brings me to the second point, which is human errors, right? So manual work contributes to a great margin of human errors as well, all right? So you have your clerical, you have your medical, mathematical errors as well, you know, when you enter your data manually, all right? So you have your duplicate, you know, data or, or even some like, you know, omission of entries as well. And also the most crucial part is your never ending administrative and tax related you know, responsibility. So you will need to monitor tax updates and other statutory you know, right, you know, changes or even like you know, new budget announcements. Right? So like internally itself also, we also need to keep ourselves updated during like you know, budget announcements. So um, like for example, like you know, in Singapore, Malaysia, and even Hong Kong as well. So like for example, like in Malaysia, right? Like you know, during COVID, the you know, the recent budget announcement that you know, we also and uh, you know, HR and Right, you know, and us, we also need to be updated that like EPF, you know, contribution was brought down to 9% from the usual, mm -hmm. you know, contribution rate of 11% as well. All right. Yeah. So, I mean, the others will be attendance because, you know, there are some companies that manage time off and attendance, you know, manually and also will have a hard time, you know, calculating payroll as well. And the other one would be uh, employee classification. So, payroll calculation typically involves like categorizing employees into different employment types. So, you have your full timers, you have your freelancers. You have your part timers, you have you know, you know, you have your temp workers as well. So each of these employees have different, uh, sort of like different benefits and also compensation. So some of them entitled to like you know OT pay, some of them don't, right? So mm. if you misclassifying your employees, can lead to paying some of your employees wrongly or lesser, or even some even more than they what they're eligible for. Mm. Yeah. Okay, I think that's pretty much like what um Arthur even said like because. He's in Hong Kong, right? He manages like Hong Kong businesses. He takes care of a lot of them. So imagine if your business is in both Singapore and Hong Kong, then you have to also take note of like, you know, MPS changes because of yeah. the budget announcements. And then like Elaine also said, like foreigners come and go. There's like foreign, like, like visa things, tax things that are all like different tiers, basically different taxation rates, um, even different salaries, right? So I think... This pretty much also kind of um, sums up what, what I really still like that, that what Elaine said, checking, checking, checking. I think at the end of the day, it's still about, um, you know, human errors. But then at the end of the day, even if you use like a, a software, you still have to check. Yeah, so um, I guess the thing is about now, you know, like when we talk about why a company still takes days, right, to process payroll, I'm just really curious since we're on this, you know, topic of days. Um, have you all like had experiences where you've had 
companies that you've helped or clients that you've helped that took really like that really struggled with their payroll processing um and if they did right like what was the problem like what was the issue that they faced was it you know like the company was only practicing pure paper-based hard copy kind of like you know uh, yeah way of calculating their payroll or maybe like uh, bosses demand uh, making sure that everything is very uh, step by step so if any of you have like you know uh, yeah stories like that to share feel free to share with the audience because maybe they would be able to relate as well okay um let, uh, if you don't mind i'll start first yeah, sure go ahead. So, uh, <laughs> great yeah so i have a client which is in a multi-level marketing uh industry in hong kong uh, they entered in Hong Kong market kind of two years ago. As you can imagine, this type of company, they have different um, pay codes or packages that mm -hmm. includes like a, a sales incentive, OT, a lot of different, of, uh, a lot of different like allowance as well. And uh, of course, uh, as a service provider, we already agree with them uh, mutually uh, comfortable schedule, payroll process, like by when they have to supply, uh, we, uh, we connect what type of information and by when they have to approve the payroll report so that we can catch up the uh, deadline, like payment deadline. So for these clients, I recall, um, you, I, I can still recall there are a lot of turbulence when we start uh, our <laughs> our services. Uh, at that moment, they are market entry clients uh, where they don't have any local HR specialist. The one who oversee the HR functions is someone uh, at headquartered in the United States. Um, yeah, but this person, they uh, she actually has no knowledge about how to run a Hong Kong payroll process. Uh, but the problem here is actually she doesn't want to follow us, even though we agree with the process. So everything, every request are on ad hoc, very urgent. Um, one example is um, this client, uh, we agreed the pay date to be set at end of month. So basically one day or two days before this day, we already agree everything uh, so that to make sure that we have enough time to upload the bank payment uh, instructions on the bank portal, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I can still remember uh, on the pay day, actually, um, we receive a call from this client from the United States and saying, hey, actually, I forgot to inform you. We have actually fired one staff like a couple of days ago. Oh. <laughs> yeah, but, but uh, luckily we haven't uploaded the uh, kind of the payment instruction yet. So we have to add very quickly uh, to stop the payment uh, instructions and do and recalculate the whole payment batch again. Of course, the, uh, the employee who get fired, we have to run separately for her like final pay, uh, uh, gather all the information like the sales incentive, uh, leave balance to come up with that payment. Um, yeah, I think it is not a pleasant uh, experience. It is very last minute and ad hoc. So back to your question is, um, this type of per turbulence apart from like what you call those uh, like paper based or, uh, or crazy demands, I would say uh, some of the uh, HR specialists, the problem is they don't want to follow the process that we set that will like make the uh, mess up all the stuff. I see. See, that sounds like a nightmare actually. Yeah, everything. Reprocessing everything. God, yeah, definitely. Because we, as a service provider, we have to really like make sure that uh, the payment really uh, goes out on the agreed day to the employees. And at the same time, for this situation, for the fire employees in Hong Kong, actually the last pay has to be uh, paid out within seven days of the uh, uh, after the uh, last employment day. So everything is very urgent, and we have to make sure that the clients is uh, in full compliance with Hong Kong uh, labor laws. Mm, I see. What about Nick or what about Elaine? Do you have any, you know, like? Um, interesting stories like what others shared actually our experience is not that dif different from Arthur you know we, yeah. we we do have clients that always um give us last minute and we realize that these are usually 
uh, clients that are say in the retail or in the F&B industries where they have you know a lot of um, staff turnover right mm. and, and a lot of foreigners then you have all those part-time full-time uh, temp staff they have all sorts of allowance on stiff allowance the uniform laundry transport you know daily rated mm. staff commissions and things like that so so when they have such level of complexity um, then, then communication and timely information becomes very important. But many a times, uh, sometimes it could be due to the nature of the business. Even it's 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 very last minute. Like you say, it's it's common that they, you know, when we are processing the payroll, they tell us, you know, this this person hasn't turned out for work for you know the last two days, and we decided to you know to to let the person let the person go, right? Um. Uh, and because they didn't turn up for work, you know, you have to deduct those those few days of of of, of pay, and a lot of this information come in the last minute. So how we try mm. to uh, 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 try to help or try to mitigate that is to get them to of course get them to uh, follow the process like Arthur says and give us the information by certain certain deadline. Um, uh, but if not, uh, because if if Things are entered into the system. For example, if they use a system like Telenor, and they can do update a lot of self do a lot of self service um, updates, or you know the staff can update the information themselves. It also helps to mitigate some of these uh information gap uh or, or time you know to, to get the information, mm -hmm. right? Uh, yeah. Or sometimes you ask them to give us access directly into their whatever system that they use, time management system or whatever, so we can. We can check on that. So we, we try to work out different processes uh, or to design different processes for, for different client needs. Mm, okay. Yeah, that sounds like a good risk management strategy in that sense. Okay, what about Nick? Do you have any uh, any interesting story to share? Because you're customer su uh, success, right? Which means you actually talk to customers on a daily basis. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I guess as part of the customer success team, basically we communicate with various uh, types of female customers with different kinds of businesses, right? So, I mean, we have seen um, many companies who are basically struggling with payroll and most importantly, you know, especially the like understanding of the specific, you know, countries, you know, statutory law, all right? So some, you know, some of them are just like one person in a HR team or the entire business, right? So they not only have to manage the business, but also to manage, you know, not only payroll itself, but they have to man, you know, manage like employees attendance, recruitment, processing claims, and things like that, right? So I think one one uh you know one example that I can give, which is somewhat like it was a somewhat of a success, you know, story, you know, you know, for our team as well, is that um like we had a non-local business owner uh who's based in Hong Kong, right? So he's not he's basically like unfamiliar with the country's you know statutory. Right, the labor law. So he's not really familiar with like what is MPF and what is MPF contribution holiday and what is even the MPF you know contribution age bracket and things like that. So he was literally very worried that his company like you know won't adhere to the compliance and he's also very scared that you know he will be subjected to like you know late fines mm. and things like that. So and and also he was unsure how you know how to calculate you no know, salary preparation. So so essentially, basically, what he explained to me and what we've you know gone through you know with him you know during the onboarding is that you know he. he you know, he, he literally basically took days to process payroll, even though the like, company has about, I think, about four to five headcount, right? Mm -hmm. So, because he wasn't sure what he was doing, right? He, got, right? he wasn't sure whether he was doing the correct thing, you know, most importantly. And he was literally going through, like, the official labor department, like, we know, website, like, each and every page, and he has to filter all the important information, you know, by himself, right? So, um, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, I think that was about... You know, that was about a year ago until now. We have not, you know, heard about him, you know, heard of him, you know, anymore. So, I mean, he's been, he, you know, going through, you know, peer uh, processing, you know, very easily. So, mm -hmm. his last feedback, I mean, last conversation that, you know, I had with him was that he basically is able to sleep well now, sleep very early <laughs> during payroll period. So, um, and he's literally totally stress-free. Yeah. Well, that's good. That's very nice. So. Yeah. Actually, I, I, I feel that, you know, all your stories actually have like something in common, which is at the end of the day, it's kind of, it's kind of a stressful job, uh, you know, like being the person that's managing a, the HR, trying to get your salary numbers correct, right? Because right. sometimes if you do it wrongly, um, you might, it might result in fines or maybe like you pay someone wrongly, then yeah, that, that's actually a huge boo-boo. So uh, this brings us 
you know, to my next question, actually. I think maybe many people in the audience who may or may not be, um, you know, a payroll specialist or an, or an HR manager um, might want to ask, which is if let's say you want to do payroll or you want to do HR, do you actually have to be specially trained to do it? So um, I think maybe like the gentleman wouldn't mind if like the lady goes first. So let's try uh, starting with Elaine this time. Okay, so I'll go first this round. So um, to answer your question, I think uh, whether it's HR or payroll processing is, is different activities. So in HR, mm. there, are, there are many levels. So the high level under HR advisory, you definitely need to be professionally trained to provide you know, HR advice like policies, uh, tax issues, employee benefits, uh, satisfaction training, retention, and, and, and so on. Even yeah. at the lower level, you have the payroll processing person or payroll person just, just doing payroll processing, mm -hmm. right? But because these days the payroll systems are, are so good, right? They calculate CPF or NPF in, uh, in Hong Kong, you know, all your SDR, SHP contribution, um, and even unpaid leave deductions. So a lot of small companies think that, you know, anyone can process payroll. So some even do with, do away with the payroll software, you know, and just use the CPF calculator that the CPF board provides. Yeah. And have a director and admin person prepare the company's payroll. But even in some very, very simple payroll computations, right, we, we see a lot of common mistakes, you know, um, mm -hmm. like, you know, not paying yeah. the CPF on bonuses or commissions and, and some allowances. They think that, you know, it, it, you don't need to pay CPF for them. You know, um, and what constitute additional or ordinary wages? Again, I'm speaking in the Singapore context. You know, mm -hmm. and of course, what should be added? You know, what is taxable? What should be added in the IR 8A or IR 8E at the end of end of each year? So, so it's it's not just processing payroll uh quickly, but also processing it accurately. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, so that like what Nicholas mentioned, at the end of the day, right, the, the authorities will go after the directors. The directors are the ones responsible and the directors will need to be able to sleep, you know, at night, you know, <laughs> uh, um, yeah. you know, ensuring that all these compliant things have been, have been, have been met. Um, you know, they, you yeah. can get a letter from the ministry uh, or CPF uh, over some non-compliance um, issues. So it's both about speed, not, not just speed, but also about, uh, about accuracy, uh, as well. Mm. Okay, thank you. So, so in short, yes, you, you need to have a professional to do it like, to be able to <laughs> sleep at night. <laughs> what about Nick and uh, Arthur? They all share the same views also. Should have somebody trained to do your payroll. Uh, I mean, I think I definitely agree with Elaine. All right? There's no doubt that um, employees literally expect your employees to pay them correct you know, amount on time. So yeah. I totally agree that it's not so much on processing payroll faster, but it has to be very accurate as well. All right. Uh, I mean, um, I mean, I can actually, you know, uh, you know, empathize with our users as well, and also like, uh, because I, you know, I've been there myself. All right. So like, you know, before I, uh, it, you know, before I joined the company, basically, I was a, basically, you know, like, uh, I was also a Talonox user, so I was not HR trained. Also, my situation was almost similar to. Uh, you know, you know, some of our users as well, which totally don't understand, you know, payroll and right, you know, and um, totally not trained and uh, you know, and so in so you can actually like you know um uh you know automated right, you know your process, you know, so that um instead of processing you know your payroll for many days, you can actually do it you know very fast and also do it accurate as well. Yeah, great. We are we are all on the same page. Uh, I think <laughs> like. A payroll system is just a software which makes the specialist's life easier. But at mm -hmm. the end, we still need a specialist to run or to manage the system. So unlike accounting, you know, uh, accounting, if you make some uh, entries wrong, which is mm. which may be very teeny amount, you can still put a corrective entries like in subsequent months, as long as it is not materially like affect your, your financial position. But we cannot make any one sense of error in payroll or otherwise your boss will be in trouble when the employees <laughs> receive the wrong amount you know so so definitely i i we are on we are all on the same page yep, yep. okay okay so i guess for everyone here the audience 
uh, looks like our next webinar would be why your company does not pay your employees accurately. <laughs> oh, <dear. laughs> so maybe that will be our next topic. All right, thanks uh, the three of you for like sharing uh, this opinion, right, on whether you know you need somebody that is uh, specially trained to do payroll. It seems like the mutual consensus is yes, you do, uh, or at least get some kind of um, help uh, on, on go read up on the knowledge because if not, you might get yourself, uh, if you're the boss, or your boss in trouble. Okay, so now maybe we talk about, um, you know, instead of having that HR person or that HR specialist, because it's like what Nicholas said, um, the company that he helped or the client that he helped, he was kind of like the director or like the boss himself, right? So he was actually doing a lot of things. Um, so for companies, right, instead of maybe doing this whole payroll processing themselves, uh, some of them might opt to do it, you know, the much more convenient way and in a way maybe also more credible which is to outsource this payroll task to someone else. Um, so I guess I want to understand why, why companies would prefer to outsource their payroll. Um, let's say if maybe they don't trust, you know, because payroll is a very sensitive thing. But what are like the main benefits that actually outweigh this trust issue? Uh, maybe we can start with Arthur first this time. Sure, no problem. Yeah, uh, that is a good question. So uh, from my experience, there are a number of uh, situations a company will outsource its payroll functions. So first of all, uh, SME companies are more welcome to uh, uh, outsource its uh, payroll functions. Uh, given that uh, SME type of companies, they have limited like headcounts. They don't have too many employees in house, so they will they will prefer like keeping their employees to do the like value creating work, like mm. for example business development, marketing or logistic this type of things. And for those like back office support, accounting, payroll, for this type of uh, functions, they will choose to outsource. So that is uh, most commonly seen in the market. And there are other situations, for example, uh, we do have uh, experience with some uh, rapidly growing company uh, into multiple uh, countries. Um, this company also tends to uh, outsource its payroll functions uh, mm -hmm. because they are too new in that particular mm -hmm. country. They have no experience in that country at, at first. And you know, payroll setup, initial registration and enrollment are always tricky country by country. So when they balance whether they outsource it to a reputable service company versus hire one or two employee, uh, in-house employees to do the uh, work, the risk, actually, I will say as a service provider, the risk of uh, outsourcing to a poor professional firm is relatively lower than hiring a bad employee. So, so I would say better management of the risk when, when a company enters into a new market, they plan, they, they, they usually go with a uh, 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 sound um, reputable uh, firm in that particular country. Mm. Mm. And the third situations, uh, I, can, I, I also see some large corporations also outsource its uh, payroll uh, functions. Let's put the cost constraints aside. I, I, I do see there are a number of other factors, for example, uh, in some performance uh, driven uh, company where they have some internal KPIs to meet. For example, those um, how I say that? That is a direct workers versus indirect uh, workers or, or direct staff versus indirect staff. Direct means like revenue generating uh, uh, front lines uh, uh, staff versus uh, indirect staff like uh, back office support staff. Mm -hmm. So this type of ratio, they may have some constraints that they cannot, uh, the, so the internal admin staff, they cannot like exceed certain amount of percentage. That is kind of an indicator of KPI they, they may have to uh, commit. So in this situation, they also outsource or some back office support or admin functions, including payroll processing to a uh, service firm. Um, yeah, that is what I can see uh, from my client pool. Mm. Okay, thanks for sharing that, Arthur. Yeah, that's actually very, very informative. 
you know, balancing out that hiring maybe two, you know, like not ideal or bad employees that might actually cause your payroll to go inaccurate, right? Mm. Might be actually safer uh, if you're going into a new market to yeah. hire like the professional to do it for you. Okay. Uh, what about, you know, Elaine, do you have anything to say for this? Um, Arthur has said it all, uh, but I'd just like <laughs> to add on one, one point that I see in, in a lot of our clients as well that decide to outsource. It's um, quite a, a rather stark turnover uh, because in, uh, in smaller companies, especially, they probably only have like one person doing payroll or HR or payroll processing. And say if that one person were to, were to resign because small companies have very limited you know, a career path or there isn't any, you know, uh, uh, opportunities for career progression as a, as a, as a HR person in a, in a small company because you're just one person, right? Mm. So if yeah. the person's leave, if the person were to resign, you know, they, they, there's no turn, uh, no, no handover, you know, uh, they couldn't get a replacement on time and even if they do, you know, the handover could be, if they're lucky, it could be just one week or even a few days. Um, otherwise, you know, there may be a gap where there's, 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 there's nobody to run the payroll. And mm -hmm. then these companies will then be, you know, uh, frantically looking for uh, outsourced service provider. Because as an outsourced service provider, we have a team of people processing the payroll. So we are not worried about, you know, one staff leaving because there's always um, other team members that they can hand over to and they have a longer time frame to hand over information. And even in the usual case of things, you know, it's not just one person taking care, but you have, you know, a few team members, even if one team member were to go on leave or, or go for study study leave or any other uh, longer leave, you know, you have other people to back you up. So mm. I think that 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 also helps in, in sort of um, uh, limiting the risk to the company because you yeah. can't have, you know, you, you can't tell the staff because I have nobody to run your payroll, hence, you know, your salary will be late or I can't submit. <laughs> you're not getting paid. Yeah, <laughs> salary payments. Yeah, yeah it, that, that, that's not going to go down well with, 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 with anybody. Yeah. yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, I guess this, this means that, you know, like if you want to reduce that man, manpower risk, right, because it's like what Elaine said, if that one person is no longer around with you, then actually having that team of like payroll outsourcers um, or experts will actually help to mitigate that risk. So, okay, so now we're still on to, you know, the topic of payroll outsourcing, but we're actually on our last question already. Since, you know, our guest speakers here today, you know, Ajuri and WeConnect, they're both our gold tier uh, payroll experts or talent So I think some, some um, misconception would be that, okay, if you outsource payroll means that, you don't use a payroll software. It's either one or the other. Um, so there's that misconception. So I would like to hear from like Arthur and Elaine. Is there, is there like a completely opposite view of that where actually, you know, having a payroll software could work with, you know, being a payroll outsourcing company as well? Okay, maybe we can hear from um, Arthur first. Definitely. Yeah, so basically, um, yeah, very open to everyone. We are using like Telenos in both like Hong Kong and Singapore <laughs> for, for our clients in Hong Kong and Singapore. And that actually we, you know, when we talk about uh, our services, uh, how to pick a system uh, that can enrich our client experience is very key. So first of all, it is not only about how user-friendly uh, the, uh, the system is. Definitely, this is very important. But there are other like, uh, important uh, components or factors we have to consider. So back to your question is, um, definitely uh, when we provide a service, and when we provide a service to our clients, and if we have the uh, right uh, software that we can deliver, that can equip with within included in our service package, that definitely is a plus. For example, um, as what I said, apart from user-friendly system, 
other factors such as whether uh, the system can have some top up HR functions, for example, leaf modules, mm -hmm. TNA, that can help to save our clients uh, life is also interesting, you know. And mm -hmm. apart from that, apart from like HR itself, there's far a lot more uh, further uh, integration that our payroll system can do. For example, I know like Talonox, you have the, uh, which is great, you have the uh, inter, uh, integration with uh, some major banks so that you can also streamline a little bit on the, um, on the payments, you know, like creating the bank payment files, uh, et cetera. And apart from the bank is also have the integration with accounting software. So that is another good thing that, um, um, you know, when it's a service provider, if we can have a best fit uh, software that we can uh, include in our service package, that can definitely help us to sell our service as well. Yeah, I see Elaine like nodding her head just now. So <laughs> you mentioned the accounting integration. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the accounting integrations is 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 important. Um, with with zero with uh, uh QuickBooks Online in, in, in mm. Singapore. Um, but other than other than that, of course, there's also other integrations. Uh, with with deputy for the time management uh, or scheduling uh, system. So those those save a lot of time. And I think in addition to what uh, Arthur has mentioned, uh, another area that uh, we like about uh Telenox is that um. Uh, we don't just use Telenox to just process payroll for, for our clients, but we give them access as well. So access to uh, to apply their leave, hmm. you know, um, then and if there's any unpaid leave, you know, uh, then you, know, uh, you can use uh, Telenox to, to calculate any uh, uh, unpaid leave deductions. Um, and uh, there's also this uh, self-service portal that they can go in, the staff can go in to actually update their own information. So that reduces the uh the, the time lag in getting the information or communication in, uh, with, with the clients or even the clients with their staff to update the information uh, in Telenox is yes, rather than manually collecting the information, passing it to the client and the client passing it to us, then you know that caused yeah. time lag and, and again you may have uh, that that may be a cause of uh, at the end of the month you know rush in terms of uh, making changes in their in their payroll. Mm, so very well said um, yeah yeah so integration is, is important and uh, fine as well. Okay, so I right. guess maybe at the end, um, you know, like what is important is that there's this misconception where we've addressed it. It's just that, you know, if you are running a payroll software or you actually are intending to get one, it doesn't mean that um, it's a be all and all. So you have like the experts that you should work with because they use the payroll software and the different types of like integrations to kind of help like you as a client to make sure that you know your HR tasks are done accurately and also hopefully quickly. All right, so um, now we've actually come to the end of like the fireside chat. And as I promised, uh, we'll keep like the last few minutes for our Q&A from the audience. Okay, so maybe um, let's see what questions we have. Okay. Someone actually asked, um, do you think that it's better to revamp the HR policy to simplify matters in complicated payroll due to legacy? If so, do you have experience that you can share in revamping HR policies to help with managing the payroll? Okay, I guess anyone uh, of our panelists can pick this question up. I think it's more of like, yeah, revamping HR policies. Does anyone want to take this uh, question? Um, I'm, not sure what, one, I, I'm not sure if I understand the question correctly, uh, mm. but uh, HR policy actually uh, encompasses a, a lot of things. So if mm, you're yeah. talking about the portion that helps with the managing of payroll, it'll probably be, uh, you know, when, when the pay, uh, salary payments are, are made, you know, uh, that, that that portion of HR policy. Um, well, I, I, again, in terms of managing of the HR policy, managing payroll, in terms of timeline, 
um, I think it would not be so much of HR policy, but internal process, like, you know, when is the cutoff time that, uh, you know, you, you, you cut off the information uh, to process uh, payroll. Mm -hmm. So, for example, we said with certain clients that if they need to make the payroll payment by, by let's say, 25th of, of, of each month, you know, we cut off the information on the 20th. So if there is any, you know, um, people taking um, unpaid leave or staff resignations, then for that, we will then, uh, you know, uh, adjust it in the following month's payroll. So, so that helps to uh, streamline the, the payroll management uh, uh, better. Mm, okay, thank you, Elaine, for, for that uh, answer. And thank you for the question as well from the audience. Um, Okay, actually, could we just take one last question? We do have a question for We Connect from the audience. So for We Connect, uh, do Arthur, I guess yeah, Arthur can answer this. Do you provide guidance to companies that want to know how much salary to pay their employees? Like what the market benchmark is, I think. Got it. So, um, um, so for these, uh, Honestly, you know, different company have different policy and different industry uh, have different like different norms and also and also like strategy how to attract the talents that they want and uh, how much they are able to uh, to offer to that particular candidate they want to hire. Definitely uh, for us, as we connect, we can share what we can see from our like client uh, base, for example, giving a high, high level range of what makes sense in the market. But at the end of the day, it is still the company policy or internal decision that how much they want to, uh, they, 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 they can offer it. Mm, okay, okay. Thank you for that, Arthur. Uh, let's see. Do we have do we have like one more question? Actually, we do. Maybe we can do this very quickly. Uh, it's a question for Nicholas actually from Telenox. How would Telenox users be assured that the system is compliant and up to date with the system? Is there a year end update? Um, or as and when updates to the system when changes take place? Yeah, I think this person is trying to ask. Uh, whether our updates are on the go whenever there's like changes like to the policies or whether it's like year end that we update to stay compliant. Right, right. Uh, I think, I mean, one thing we, you know, we always assure, you know, uh, I mean, we assure to our users is that um, system is always up to date uh, with the latest, um, you know, statutory updates. Uh, so, you know, you know, basically, you know, so that, uh, you know, the system is always compliant all right, and we want to ensure that uh, all businesses, uh, all businesses, you know, our users, you know, who are using us also are, you know, are, you know, compliant as well. We know whether you are in Singapore, Malaysia, or even Hong Kong. So there is no year-end updates, but we do it on a, we do it on a regular basis, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, so every time when there is any updates uh, from, uh, you know, from the Labor Department or from the Employment Act and things like that also, so we will automatically update the system uh, almost immediately. Yeah. Mm, okay, I hope that answers uh, your question like to you know the audience. All right, so I think I won't hold you up uh, any longer. Let's all go for lunch. Uh, but anyway, thank you all for the questions from the audience. I'm very glad that each of our panelists actually answered a question. Um, and thanks so much, especially to our speakers today um, for really like giving your insights and for sharing about how you know companies can maybe take less days to process payroll or payroll uh, process the payroll more accurately so <laughs> yeah maybe we'll stay tuned for that fireside chat in the future and we'll invite elaine and Arthur back again and nicholas as well <laughs> to address that all right so um again yeah thank you everyone we appreciate you uh, for being here thank you for attending um fireside chat number three of six fireside chats that we have for today's blast off event um let's go for a lunch break uh 